Hello, I'm Mercedes Stevenson, and this is the West Block, politics, perspectives, and players. Spring has sprung, and with it, a whole host of wild weather events. Huge swaths of eastern Canada are underwater as spring floodwaters have surged to record levels. There have also been tornadoes in the United States and bushfires raging in Australia. Citizens and governments are scrambling to deal with these disasters and the damage they cause. Climate change has everyone wondering if there'll be more ahead and if this is the new normal. Joining me now on the causes and consequences of the extreme weather events we've been seeing is David Phillips, Senior Climatologist at Environment Canada. Welcome to the show, David. Thank you, Mercedes. David, let's start with the flooding here in Ottawa. A lot of people are worried as the floodwaters continue to rise and damage homes. Two years ago, we had a similar flood and we were told then it was a once a century event. Yet now we have another one. And in between those two floods, tornadoes hit the city. When you look around at some of the wild weather in Canada, does it seem like it's getting more frequent to you? Well, there's certainly, anecdotally, you would think that is the case. I mean, it's a big country. There's always kind of weird, wild and wacky weather happening everywhere. But particularly floods, I think if there was one kind of um, sort of extreme weather event that seems to be occurring more frequently with greater impacts and, and greater intensity, it probably is flooding. And uh, we have certainly, and we've all, our whole history of our country, we have seen floods at this time of the year. It tends to be the spring uh, from snow melting, ice jamming, uh, heavy rains kind of floods. What we haven't seen in, in other era times is, is the flash flood, the American flood. And yet we're seeing that because in urban areas, every time it rains in Toronto, it seems to create a flood no matter how much rain has fallen. So clearly, I think that people are beginning to think that the weather's becoming more extreme, more impactful. And I don't think they're imagining it. I think these uh, climatologists are beginning to see the data. We're experiencing it. Now we're actually seeing the data that what's happening is, is clearly a change from the past. Why is it in particular that it seems like there's more floods becoming problematic? What changes have happened that are lending to that particular phenomenon? Well, you know, Mercedes, flooding is, a, is an act of God, but floods... I think are also an act of, of humankind. Um, you know, it's not our grandparents' flood anymore or rainstorm. What we're seeing is that it used to be, you know, what falls from the sky was all the important thing. How much rain are we going to get? How much snow do we get? But it also, what has changed is probably as much as the weather or the climate is that we have changed. You and I, society has changed. We're doing things differently. Uh, we're, we're, built, we're living more and more Canadians live in urban areas. My gosh, it, it's sort of interesting. We're the, probably the lowest population density in the world and the most urbanized. I mean, 85% of us live in cities that are hardened surfaces, asphalt, building material, and, and pavement. And every time it rains, it doesn't matter how dry Ottawa is or Montreal, it becomes a, a, a flood drop. And then at the same time, even in rural areas, we're, we're farming differently. We're, we're turning natural drainage into almost uh, just uh, intensively agricultural. So therefore, that water balance of the past is just different now. And so when the rain falls, it falls on different surfaces. And so therefore, its response time is different. And so I think that's really why we're seeing some of these impactful kinds of floods. Because, hey, the climate has changed, no question about it but probably we have changed. Do you think that politicians sometimes exploit this a little bit? You hear the Liberals talking a lot about climate change, which you're saying is indeed, in fact, a factor, but also you're talking about the way that we're living and the way that we've changed the climate and the way we're building. That's a tough thing for a politician to confront, to ask people to change the way they live and to say, maybe we shouldn't be in cities, maybe we should farm differently. So where would you like to see the discourse going on this in a way that's useful politically to make changes? Well, I think the pol politicians have caught up with the scientists. I mean, the scientists, I mean, the, the one that you can't get scientists to agree in anything, Mercedes. 
And yet 98% of scientists think the world is warming up faster and greater now than it has in a long time. And we're beginning to also see the impacts of this. And I think that um, uh, uh, certainly uh, sometimes politicians go a little further. They think every time the weather misbehaves, that's, uh, that's our fault coming out of our tailpipes and smokestacks. I, I don't think that's the case. I just think there's a new agent of change. It's along with the sun, with the oceans and, the, and volcanoes. It's also people. So I think that this is sort of changing the, the look and the feel of kind of, of winter. But I think what we need to do is we need to respect the fact that things are changing and do things differently. You know, the, the infrastructure that we have now was built back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. We're still sucking off that infrastructure. We're doing things differently now, and we're expecting that same infrastructure to handle a different kind of climate. So my sense is I would like to see, yes, we need to cut back on our fossil fuels. No question about that. But I think we also have to build safer communities to weatherproof our communities. You know, I'd like to live in a green community, but I'd also like to live in one where we've uh, built the infrastructure to withstand the kind of weather you're going to, to get. I mean, you can't prevent that storm from coming your way, but you can prevent it from becoming a disaster by properly preparing for it and responding to it. So I think that it's, it's, we've got to do things differently. It's not the, the old times, it's, it's new times. And I think we have to get, uh, get with it in terms of, of adjusting our, uh, what we're putting into the atmosphere, of course, but also what we're doing on the surface of the earth too. You've been watching weather events for a long time. How has the public discussion changed from when you would sit down at the 6 p.m. news to watch the forecast and find out what was happening the next day versus now when everybody has apps and live streams? Well, I think there's a smaller world. I mean, there are things that have, we used to think that these things happen to the other side of the world to a society different than ours. And I think what we've shown is that, hey, it's happening in our own backyards and, and front yards. Nobody's immune from this. And um, I mean, we've all created the issue and that we also have to be part of the of the solution. Uh, certainly, um, forecasting is getting better. Um, uh, we, we know our, our models are better and people are getting information sooner and more more detailed information, being able to make decisions based on that. Um, but I think that uh, we know nature is still all powerful. Uh, uh, my gosh, uh, it is uh, and it's trying to guess what what Mother Nature is doing uh, is, is will always be a challenge. I mean, there's no, uh, uh, you know, I often say there will always be jobs for weather people because, hey, uh, there will never be perfect forecasts, uh, uh, and especially in Canada, because we live in a country where, hey, we have lots of weather. It's not like Malta or Cyprus or Honolulu. The weather changes on a dime here, as they, they say in Newfoundland. If you don't like the weather out your front door, look out your back door. So we have a lot of variety of weather, a lot of extremes of weather, and um, but, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful of the future. I'm, I'm not a, a pessimist with regards. I think the world's going to end in 2065. I think that we will begin to see the light. We'll begin to change our ways. And I think that we will, in fact, uh, learn to uh, to live better with Mother Nature than we've done recently.